Yeah, I just I'm, I'm reminded that true success is defined with effort and process and not results. And uh, I thought I got great effort from our ball club tonight. I, I thought uh, our, our pitching staff just kind of held us at bay um, until right there at the end. We had a couple of chances, but I, I thought also that actually Bauman and, um, uh, you know, there at the end, uh, Cannon always gives us everything that he has. So I thought that was in, in shape. Um, I thought Drumbowski was uh, amazing tonight and uh, Penn was resilient and uh, we kind of pride ourselves on being a mentally tough team and I just uh, I give all the credit in the world to to Penn and their ball club we knew they had a <laughs> uh, high level pitching staff and it showed even when they went to the pen the quality of arms kept coming at us um, and then you know we just didn't get enough hits we were I don't know three for 25 with the first six guys and then four for whatever in the ball game here and when we did hit a ball hard it just didn't seem to happen tonight I got Stanfield in the first and Stanfield when the bases were loaded after we tied the game in the eighth that, that would have been nice to find uh, some grass there and, and encasing in the tent uh, the backside the, the double play there um, was exactly the approach he's supposed to try to put on the baseball but uh, I, I just I thought offensively I, I trying to see how many strikeouts we had, 14 strikeouts. We just, we were not resilient, couldn't link up enough offensively to to, to keep pace with a, a very quality um, pin game. So we'll have to bounce and get back out here tomorrow and understand that we're, that it's all about tomorrow. We tried to invest as much as we could to make today important. We'll have to do the same thing and try to fight our hearts out to be here on Sunday. That's kind of the next step for us. Uh, they just competed well and um, had their stuff set. And uh, I mean, they, just, they pitched great. Like Coach Thompson said, they, they had uh, some guys come out of the pen who were good, and their starter was great. So uh, a lot of credit to those guys. Bias. Um How tough is it when Jared is able to score those runs, even with those bunts, like three second bunts, like right there in front of the uh, right in front of the catcher? Yeah. Well placed. I think we knew the nine hole, one hole. We thought they would continue to do that until the situation changed or a runner wasn't going to be on second base. That's how we got to Omaha last year. We absolutely did a, a safety to, to advance to the College World Series. So you're not in a very good defensive posture there if that bunt's executed. And I thought they executed a couple of bunts and we knew exactly that was the play and was coming. I, I think Wright on the second one went out and tried to get back and it just didn't have enough pace on it. And the first one, we had a chance and Will came downhill on it pretty good, but uh, um, uh, there wasn't enough time from the catch to get it back to the to the catcher. Um, I, I thought that's exactly what they should do in the situation, uh, executed well. And we really had a couple of shots probably before that, especially being the home team to, to, to garnish one run and uh, we're not able to do it. Coach, what was the thinking and I, I know when to change pitchers is probably one of the hardest decisions to make during a game. But to uh, to to not go to the to your closer or there before the home run. Yeah, I, I just thought Tanner was throwing that good. That was a four pitch walk there, but he had thrown two and two thirds inning with two hits. And I thought he was throwing the ball pretty good. We were, were really trying to line him up for the for the for the next guy the three hole. I thought the three and four hole hitters were the guys with the best numbers. Hensler and Miller. Appel had a huge night, including that, that home run there. So he had had a single through the six hole the time before. So that's that's very fair to second guess in that situation there. But uh, uh, I wish I would have. <laughs> but um, I, I kind of like the contact we were getting. I yeah. still thought Bauman's biggest challenge was um, uh, the walk. I thought they would do more with that. The guy hit a single last time, and, and Bauman's kind of a guy that's stretched out for us and done stuff, and kind of that 50 pitch mark is kind of the place where we feel like we really got to get him out. And uh, I think he finished with 32 pitches, so I still thought he was in a good range of his pitch count, and we, we, we gave him that hitter. Uh, thankful we were able to come back and, and at least tie the ball game up to make it about something else. But uh, yeah, I, I wish I would have brought Cannon in the, the, the pitch before. Uh, just. Uh, or a great swing and a great night by the by the two hole guys for for Penn. Right. 
case and what are you going to tell your teammates about what it's going to take to fight back now through the losers break? Um, just no time to be sad about tonight. Um, it hurts, but you know, it's baseball and we get another chance to come play tomorrow. So um, Coach Thompson always says we can be sad when the season's over or and the season's not over. We got another game tomorrow. So do all we can to play our style of baseball and continue to fight and uh, execute a little bit better than we did tonight and keep it simple. Which you, you talked about offensive approach. Did you see? Did you see what you wanted to see from the guys? Did, is it was it more about pin tonight than, than your guys at the plate? Yeah, I, I think you know I don't know. I think that might be more appropriate for Case. And um, even when I thought we hit the ball hard that wasn't in play, it was kind of extreme foul. The left handers were extreme uh, pull. You know, like over the almost uh, between the first base dugout and halfway down the line. I just, uh, I didn't think we were gathering energy and delivering in the middle of the field. I, I do think the starter had a ton to do with that. And uh, I, I do, even though I, I give the starting pitcher a ton of credit, I, I think Casey would agree that our right-handers, at least for a, a time, first time through the lineup, probably another half a time through the second time, we got out exactly the same way. So, so you can get out and do some things, but when we just continued to to get out the same way, that that bothered me a little bit. And we we eventually steadied because we pitched good enough to get him to pitch count and do all that. I thought the lefties had the best shot and was seeing the ball much better uh, against uh, Trombowski. But uh, I thought our right-handers got out the same way too often, getting too deep in the ball game. I thought that was a, a challenge, I, 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 some type of adjustment. And, you know, we wound up being the, uh, the puppet in that situation a little bit with our right-handers. And, you know, you, you want to puppeteer some things. And I thought uh, we have to tip our hat to Dombrowski for, for getting that done tonight. Coach, you guys have another matchup tomorrow. you got to get right back into it. You can just talk about bouncing back and being ready to play tomorrow. Yeah, we've been practicing that all year, playing in the Southeastern Conference. So I just think the 10 weeks of playing in our league is uh, – uh, done that, you know, we play at six on Fridays and and, and two o'clock on Saturdays. Unfortunately, we're staying with that same thing that we've done at home all year long. So, um, again, I, I trust our players, I trust our coaches to stay consistent and come back out and, and fight. And just we really talk, tried to talk about not looking ahead today. We really uh, can't anymore. So, again, I, I think I'd be honest enough. I, I can absolutely tip my hat to Penn tonight. Uh, if I thought our, uh, our effort and our process was off, I think I would be man enough to, to call that out as well. I think that was the biggest thing with some of our right-handed at-bats early against the starter. Uh, but I, I know when our guys are competing and when, when something's not right. And they've, this team has given us great effort, and, and that, they've been a joy. Um, but we won nine regional games in a row, which is hard to do. And now we, we lose a ball game. So we just got to take it one at a time and see if we can – find our way through nine innings to win a ball game or ever how many innings it takes and find ourselves here on Sunday. I think that's the goal of the ball club uh, right now. And I want them to see them fight to the last pitch starting at two tomorrow. Last question, Tobias. Uh, have you signed on your starter? Have you uh, we'll, we'll get and look at it a little bit. You, you would think Bell would be the be, be the option and, 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 and the logical pick. I think that's who the players would want with our backs against the wall. But, I uh, haven't got back to the locker room and to the rest of the coaches yet, but I would say probable would be Tom Bell. Thank you, Coach. Jason, Coach, Coach talked about getting out the same way. How do you avoid that happening? Um, I got to make adjustments and uh, you know kind of analyze what he's what he's doing to not only you but guys in front of you and behind you that are also you know like Coach Tom said right-handed and how he's pitching them. Try to come up with a solution, maybe sit on a pitch or look in a spot or something. But uh, there's got to be adjustments made um, right then and there. Uh, can't wait too long. So that's kind of what we needed to do a little bit better tonight.